Chapter 2 Listening and Decoding Objectives To introduce the students to new aspects of listening and decoding to educate students to listen to and decode poetry and TED Talks. To open new vistas of knowledge of life and philosophy for the students. In the previous editions of Envision you have been introduced to listening skills with respect to conversations, interviews and persuasive speeches. You were given excerpts from conversations, interviews of eminent personalities and audio and video version of speeches, which had enlightened you. In this edition, you will be given some classic gems of poetry from Western and Indian literature. Several reading and listening sessions will enable you to understand the nuances of these skills. Especially, the poems and the TED Talks give you a refreshing mix of literature and life. Decoding is another skill which will make you understand and perceive the subtle aspects of these literary pieces. Pay attention to different elements of poetry like figures of speech, alliteration, structure etc. Poems 1. Stopping by woods on a snowy evening Approach to the text Robert Frost Which life do you like the most village life or city life? Why? Do you agree with the statement, poems begin in delight and end? In Wisdom 50. See you ever shine. Have you ever been caught in a conflict in the matter of making choice? A Note on the Poet Robert Frost, 1874-1963, an American poet, was born in San Francisco. Frost spent his early days in Massachusetts. He studied at Harvard and Dartmouth. His first collection of poems Boy's Will was published in England in 1913. In 1915, he returned to America as a recognized poet. In course of time, he became the voice of New England and won several awards for his poetry. Most of his poems are narratives. He was a poet who believed in the old ways of being new. His pastoral form conveys a variety of ideas and attitudes. Frost uses natural scenes as the backdrop against which the human drama is played out. His style is colloquial in tone, and he is called the Wordsworth of America. For Frost, poetry begins in delight and ends in wisdom. About the poem the horse rider in the poem first looks at the woods as an aspect of nature and admires its beauty. The poem expresses the conflicts between temptation and the social obligation of the speaker. Summary Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening is composed by Robert Frost, published in 1923. It is one of his most well-known and often anthologized poems. Throughout the poem, Frost uses vivid imagery to describe the winter landscape and the silence of the woods. The speaker's contemplation of the woods creates a sense of peace and stillness, but also a feeling of isolation and melancholy. The final lines of the poem are perhaps the most famous. And miles to go before I sleep. And miles to go before I sleep. 31. These lines suggest that the speaker still has much to do before he can rest, both literally in terms of the journey ahead of him, but also metaphorically in terms of the demands and responsibilities of his life. Despite the lure of the peaceful woods, he knows he must continue on his path. Stanza 1 The poet stopped in a snowy forest. The owner of the forest was not present there at that time. The poet says he knows him. His house is in the nearby village. He won't see him stopping there because he won't think that a traveler can stop in the woods at such an odd hour. He is a practical person, but poets have a strange liking.
They start where others close. So the poet stopped in the jungle on a snowy evening. Stanza 2. The poet's horse won't accept the poet stopping easily. He might think that there was no farmhouse nearby. Why did the poet stop between the frozen lake and the woods then? Besides, it is the darkest evening of the year. Does any sane person stop in a snowy forest at such an odd hour? Stanza 3 The horse of the poet looked disgusted waiting at that uninteresting place. He wanted to warn the poet and to break his concentration. He doubted that the poet had stopped there by mistake. So he gave his harness bells a shake. The poet heard the sound. Along with this sound he heard the sound of sweep of easy wind and downy flake. Stanza 4 The poet saw the woods. It looked lovely, dark and deep. The poet was fascinated by the woods. He wanted to watch such spiritual beauty forever. But the horse's harness bell brought him, to earth, to reality. He now realized that he had promises to keep. 52. To fulfill the promises he must walk miles. But life is short. At any moment death may come. Before that you must reach near goal. Fulfill your promises. Otherwise at the verge of death, you will cry O oh death. Please wait. I have not yet finished my duties and responsibilities. Once the poet, while returning to his farmhouse through the woods in the evening time, stopped his horse, got down and watched the jungle beauty on the snowy evening keenly and enjoyed the beauty wholeheartedly. Since he was endowed with a poetic temperament, he got charmed. But his horse could not take interest in the frozen swamp. He expressed his disgust and gave his harness bells a shake to ask if the poet had. The poet was in an absorbing mood. The warning of the horse brought him from the fancy world. He came to reality and realized that even if the jungle is lovely, dark and deep, he can't stay there permanently, because he has promises to keep. He has to fulfill a lot of ambitions before death. So he left the place. Saramsha E. Kavite and Nu Robert Frastravaru Samyoji Sidhu Undu Savira the Umbai Nura Ipat Muru Rally Prakatisalaitu Idu Avara Atenta Prasidha Matu Sankalana Gunda Kavanagalli Undagide Kavite of the Ku Frastravaru Chaligala the Budrusha Matu Kardina Mavanavanu Vivarisalu Pratima Vinyasa Chitrana Vanu Balasidare Kadina Bagegina Chintaneu Shanti Matu Nishalatea Bavane and Nu Srushti Suda Rondige Pratekate Matu Dumana da Bavane and Nu Untu Maduta De Kavitea Konea Salugalu Bahala Prasidda Vagi De Nanu Malaguva Munda Aneka Mailugalu Hogabeku Matu Nanu Malaguva Munda Aneka Mailugalu Hogabeku ಈ ಸಾಲುಗಳು ಬರಹಗಾರರು ತಮ್ಮ ಮುಂದಿನ ಪ್ರಯಾಣದ ವಿಷಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಗೂ ರೂಪಕವಾಗಿ ಅವರ ಜೀವನದ ಬೇಡಿಕೆಗಳು ಮತ್ತು ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿಗಳ ವಿಷಯದಲ್ಲಿ ವಿಶ್ರಾಂತಿ ಪಡೆಯುವ ಮೊದಲು ಇನ್ನು ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನದನ್ನು ಮಾಡಬೇಕೆಂದು ಸೂಚಿಸುತ್ತದೆ ಶಾಂತಿಯುತ ಕಾಡಿನ ಆಮಿಷದ ಹೊರತಾಗಿಯೂ ಆತ ತನ್ನ ಹಾದಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮುಂದುವರಿಯಬೇಕೆಂದು ಆತನಿಗೆ ತಿಳಿದಿದೆ ಚರಣ ಒಂದು Kaviyu Himabarita Kardinali Nintanu. Ah Samayadali Kardina Malika Alira Lilla. Kavige Atana Bagge Tilidide. Atana Mane Halia Hatira Vide. Kaviyu Ali Nilu Udanu Avanu Nodu Udilla. Ekendare Uba Prayanikanu Antaha Samayadali Kardinali Nilla Bahudu Indu Avanu Yochis Udilla. Ita Vyavaharika Vyakti. Adare Kavi Vichitravada Ichegalidavu. ಇತರರು ಮುಕ್ತಾಯ ಮಾಡುವ ಸ್ಥಳದಲ್ಲಿ ಇವರು ಆರಂಭಿಸುತ್ತಾರೆ ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ಕವಿಯು ಅಡವಿಯ ಬಳಿ ಬಂದು ಹಿಮಸಂಜೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಂತರು ಚರಣ 2 ಕುದುರೆಯು ಕವಿಯ ನಿಲುಗಡೆಯನ್ನು ಸುಲಭವಾಗಿ ಒಪ್ಪಿಕೊಳ್ಳುವುದಿಲ್ಲ ಹತ್ತಿರದಲ್ಲಿ ತೋಟದ ಮನೆ ಇಲ್ಲವೆಂದು ಭಾವಿಸಿರಬಹುದು ಕವಿಯು ಹೆಪ್ಪುಗಟ್ಟಿದ ಸರೋವರ ಮತ್ತು ಕಾಡಿನ ನಡುವೆ ಏಕೆ ನಿಲ್ಲಿಸಿದರು Ashtalade, Andu Varshada Atyanta Katalea Sanjayagitu. 
ಇಂತಹ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಹಿಮಭರಿತ ಕಾಡಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವುದೇ ಬುದ್ಧಿವಂತ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಯು ನಿಲ್ಲುತ್ತಾನೆಯೇ ಚರಣ ಮೂರು ಕವಿಯ ಕುದುರೆಯು ಅಸಮಾಧಾನವಾಗಿ ಆಸಕ್ತಿರಹಿತ ಸ್ಥಳದಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾಯುತ್ತಿತ್ತು ಅದು ಕವಿಯನ್ನು ಎಚ್ಚರಿಸಲು ಮತ್ತು ಅವರ ಏಕಾಗ್ರತೆಯನ್ನು ಮುರಿಯಲು ಬಯಸಿತು ಅದು ಕವಿಯ ಬಹುಶಃ ತಪ್ಪಾಗಿ ಆ ಸ್ಥಳದಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಲ್ಲಿಸಿರಬಹುದೆಂದು ಅನುಮಾನಕ್ಕೆ ಒಳಗಾಗಿತು ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ಅದು ತನ್ನ ಸರಂಜಾಮುಗಳನ್ನು ಅಲ್ಲಾಡಿಸಿತು ಕವಿಯು ಶಬ್ದವನ್ನು ಆಲಿಸಿದರು ಈ ಶಬ್ದದ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಬಾಚುವ ಗಾಳಿಯ ಮತ್ತು ಬಯಲು ಮೇಡಿನಂತಹ ಶಬ್ದವು ಇವರಿಗೆ ಕೇಳಿಸಿತು ಚರಣ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಕವಿಯು ಅಡವಿಯನ್ನು ನೋಡಿದರು ಅದು ಸುಂದರವಾಗಿ ಗಾಢವಾಗಿ ಮತ್ತು ಆಳವಾಗಿ ಕಂಡಿತು ಕವಿಯು ಕಾಡಿನಿಂದ ಆಕರ್ಷಿತನಾದರು ಇಂತಹ ಆಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಸೌಂದರ್ಯವನ್ನು ಇವರು ಶಾಶ್ವತವಾಗಿ ವೀಕ್ಷಿಸಲು ಬಯಸಿದರು ಆದರೆ ಕುದುರೆಯ ಸರಂಜಾಮು ಗಂಟೆ ಇವರನ್ನು ಭೂಮಿಗೆ ವಾಸ್ತವಕ್ಕೆ ಕರೆತಂದಿತು ಅವರು ಈಡೇರಿಸಬೇಕಾದ ಭರವಸೆಗಳನ್ನು ಹೊಂದಿದ್ದಾರೆಂದು ಈಗ ಅರಿತುಕೊಂಡರು ಭರವಸೆಗಳನ್ನು ಈಡೇರಿಸಲು ಮೈಲುಗಟ್ಟಲೆ ನಡೆಯಬೇಕು ಆದರೆ ಜೀವನ ಚಿಕ್ಕದಾಗಿದೆ ಯಾವುದೇ ಗಳಿಗೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸಾವು ಬರಬಹುದು ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಮುಂಚಿತವಾಗಿ ಗುರಿಯ ಬಳಿ ತಲುಪಬೇಕು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಭರವಸೆಗಳನ್ನು ಈಡೇರಿಸಿ ಇಲ್ಲದಿದ್ದರೆ ಸಾವಿನ ಅಂಚಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಅಳುತ್ತಾ ಓ ಮರಣವೇ ದಯಾಮಡಿ ನಿರೀಕ್ಷಿಸು ನಾನು ನನ್ನ ಕರ್ತವ್ಯ ಮತ್ತು ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿಗಳನ್ನು ಇನ್ನೂ ಪೂರ್ಣಗೊಳಿಸಲಿಲ್ಲ ಎನ್ನಬೇಕಾಗುತ್ತದೆ ಒಮ್ಮೆ ಕವಿಯು ಸಂಜೆಯ ಹೊತ್ತಿಗೆ ಕಾಡಿನ ಮೂಲಕ ತನ್ನ ತೋಟದ ಮನೆಗೆ ಹಿಂದಿರುಗುತ್ತಿದ್ದಾಗ ತನ್ನ ಕುದುರೆಯನ್ನು ನಿಲ್ಲಿಸಿ ಕೆಳಗಿಳಿದು ಹಿಮಭರಿತ ಸಂಜೆಯ ಕಾಡಿನ ಸೌಂದರ್ಯವನ್ನು ವೀಕ್ಷಿಸಿ ಅದನ್ನು ಮನಃಪೂರ್ವಕವಾಗಿ ಆನಂದಿಸಿದರು ಅವರು ಕಾವ್ಯಮಯ ಮನೋಧರ್ಮವನ್ನು ಹೊಂದಿದ್ದರಿಂದ ಅದರಿಂದ ಮೋಡಿಗೆ ಒಳಗಾದರು ಆದರೆ ಕುದುರೆಯು ಘನೀಕೃತ ಚೌಗು ಪ್ರದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಆಸಕ್ತಿ ವಹಿಸಲು ಸಾಧ್ಯವಾಗಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಅಸಮಾಧಾನ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಪಡಿಸುತ್ತಾ ತನ್ನ ಸರಂಜಾಮು ಗಂಟೆಯನ್ನು ಅಲ್ಲಾಡಿಸಿತು ಕವಿಯು ಕಾಡಿನ ಸೌಂದರ್ಯ ಹೀರುವ ಮನಸ್ಥಿತಿಯಲ್ಲಿದ್ದರು ಕುದುರೆ ನೀಡಿದ ಎಚ್ಚರಿಕೆ ಅವರನ್ನು ಅಲಂಕಾರಿಕ ಪ್ರಪಂಚದಿಂದ ಕರೆತಂದಿತು ಅವರು ವಾಸ್ತವಕ್ಕೆ ಬಂದರು ಮತ್ತು ಕಾಡು ಸುಂದರವಾಗಿ ಕತ್ತಲೆಯಾಗಿ ಮತ್ತು ಆಳವಾಗಿದ್ದರೂ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಶಾಶ್ವತವಾಗಿ ಉಳಿಯಲು ಸಾಧ್ಯವಿಲ್ಲ ಎಂದು ಅರಿತುಕೊಂಡರು ಏಕೆಂದರೆ ಅವರ ಭರವಸೆಗಳನ್ನು ಉಳಿಸಿಕೊಳ್ಳಬೇಕಾಗಿತ್ತು ಸಾವಿಗೂ ಮುಂಚೆ ಹಲವಾರು ಆಸೆಗಳನ್ನು ಈಡೇರಿಸಿಕೊಳ್ಳಬೇಕಾಗಿತ್ತು ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ಆ ಸ್ಥಳದಿಂದ ಹೊರಟರು ಕಾಂಪ್ರಹೆನ್ಷನ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ದ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಪೇಜ್ ಈಚ್ ಒನ್ ಹೌ ಆರ್ ದ ನೇರೇಟರ್ ದಿ ಓನರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹೋರ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಾಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಒನ್ ಅನದರ್ ಆನ್ಸ್ In Robert Frost's poem, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, the persona deals with the inner struggle to choose between his instinct or his rational thought which are seen respectively through the contrast of the narrator's desire to stay by the woods longer and the promises he has to keep throughout the poem. At the end of the poem, the narrator chooses to continue his long journey thanks to his horse who can be seen as the narrator's external consciousness which brings the narrator to his senses the narrator's growing desire to stay by the woods is caused by the peaceful atmosphere and beauty of the place the woods are lovely 13 and fill up with snow 4 the snow which is white and soft can be seen as a metaphorical blanket which covers the narrator, protects him from the coldness and makes him want to sleep there. The rhythm of the poem sounds like a lullaby and almost makes the narrator fall asleep. The persona's desire to stay is also expressed by the lack of people in the area. There is no farmhouse near six, and the owner of the woods is not here. His house is in the village though. He will not see me stopping here, 2-3. The fact that the woods belong to somebody makes his desire more important, because it is the propitious moment to stay. There is a sense of inactivity as everything around the narrator is still which is illustrated by the frozen lake, 7. Furthermore, the only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake, 11-12, 
brings quietness and emphasizes the fact that the speaker is alone and feels in peace. All these factors, beauty, quietness, peacefulness and solitude make the narrator feel a growing desire which causes a dilemma in his choice. Am I In contrast to the attraction towards the woods, the narrator has obligations. These obligations are illustrated by the horse who is a reminder of the narrator's constraints. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near five to six. The animal does not understand why they stopped, because there is no logical reason. There is nothing around. It is cold and it is also the darkest evening of the year, 8. The horse behaves in a rational way. Thus he is the voice of reason. In order to wake his master, the horse, he, gives his harness bells a shake, to ask if there is some mistake, 8 to 9. The word, shake, can also be used as a verb, the horse shaking the narrator, so that he can come back to his rationality because the speaker is too subjugated by the beauty of the woods. Moreover, the alliteration of S and K in these lines brings a louder sound in the poem that can be interpreted as an echo of the bells ringing. The narrator's responsibilities prevail over the desire to stay by the woods, but I have promises to keep, 14. At the end of the poem, the speaker tries to convince himself that he has made the right decision as he repeats twice, and miles to go before I sleep, 15. Stopping by woods on a snowy evening, illustrates well the behavior of a man being absorbed by his desire. The persona's decision is confusing because he is captivated by a place where everything seems to be advantageous on the one hand. On the other, however, he has to fulfill his duties. Stopping by the woods is an emotional moment for the narrator, but the horse quickly brings him back to his rationality. Continuing his road is more reasonable than staying by the woods too long. 2. What is the allegorical significance of the woods and sleep? Ends. The poem, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, is Therefore, an allegory of life showing the need to enjoy life, the pressures that often keep us from enjoying life, and the unfortunate fact that most people do not realize what is O Redmi Note 9 PROJE 57 gone before it is too late. Robert Frost's poem, Stopping by the Woods, is symbolizes a journey of life and a movement towards death. Almost every single element in the poem in that sense is symbolic of something. The undefined traveler on horseback reminds one of the knights of the Middle Ages in course of a heroic adventure. The cold in the dead of night in the frozen lake in the woods, the darkest evening of the year all these elements build an ambiance where the imminence of death is at odds with the indomitable spirit of love, as exemplified by the traveler. The owner of the woods is referred to but his name has not been mentioned. This can be a reference to the mystic and almost unnameable presence of God. The oath of the traveler to go on come what may, keeping his promises before he has to submit to the final call of death, an eternal sleep of sorts. The end of the poem is thus replete with philosophical symbolism. The most significant symbol in the poem stopping by woods on a snowy evening would be the woods. Through the adjectives that the speaker uses in the poem, the reader should recognize the tone, mood of mystery and danger. This is evident when he says, lovely, dark, and deep, line 13. Through the descriptions throughout the poem, it becomes clear that the woods would symbolize the beauty and mystery of the world that most people are just too busy to appreciate. It is symbolic of the way that most people nowadays go through life thinking only of themselves, being self-centered, and ignoring the mystery and the beauty of the nature that surrounds them. 3. What does the writer do in the poem, stopping by woods on a snowy evening? Ends. 
The rider stops near a farmhouse and watches the snowfall for a time. Explanation The speaker rides in his horse-drawn sleigh or carriage through the snow to the edge of the woods where he am I not stop near a farmhouse and watches the snowfall for a time. 3813125 JAG Evershine 4. What symbols are used by frost? Ands. Woods. Here woods are symbolizes as contrast to civilization. Through this poem woods can be categorized as a symbol of death. Nature. In this poem, nature is the symbol and the snow is a symbol of coolness, while frozen lake is a symbol of the death and chillness of life. Horse. In this poem Robert Frost takes horse as a symbol, which symbolizes as a soul of the poet. Sleep. Robert Frost conveys his ideas by the word, sleep. So, this word symbolizes death and tells that before death an individual has to complete unfulfill promises. Village. Village is symbolized here as society and civilization. 5. Discuss the theme of the poem, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. Ands. Each of Robert Frost's poems forwards a central philosophy. In Stopping by the Woods on a Snow Evening, the main idea is the triumph of worldly duties over the pleasure principle. The poem's narrator is a seemingly hardworking man who wishes to stop on his journey to appreciate the bounty of nature. Still, instead, he responds to the calling of his responsibilities and moves on to finish his work. The narrator's journey is a metaphor for life, and the snow-filled woods represent pleasures and indulgences. In life, one can either respond to the call of pleasures and lead a hedonistic life or respond to one's commitments. The poet encourages us to do the latter since there will always be time to rejuvenate and enjoy once one is through life's duties. However, the time to work and achieve something will never return. Upon performing a thematic analysis of the poem, one finds that the central theme is conflict. The conflict between one's desire to enjoy life and the need to work hard to get somewhere in life. Our or life is shaped by the calling that we give in to. Such situations in Life 59 in which we decide in favor of duties and responsibilities might make us lose out on some moments of joy and pleasure but the poet assures us that it is for the greater good because, as driven human beings, we always have miles to go before we sleep. Once the miles have been traversed, nothing can stop us from enjoying life guilt-free. The sound of the horse's bells is like the little voice in the speaker's head reminding him that it is not time to seek beauty and rest just as yet. 6. Stopping by woods on a snowy evening, contrasts the world of beauty with the world of human obligation, discuss. Ands, in Robert Frost's poem, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, the persona deals with the inner struggle to choose between his instinct or his rational thought which are seen respectively through the contrast of the narrator's desire to stay by the woods longer and the promises he has to keep throughout the poem. In Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, the immense beauty and power of nature is used to enhance the sense of procrastination that is felt towards death, leading to the complete abolishment of time. Robert Frost demonstrates a dedicated person's commitment to life. Despite the hardships and troubles that life carries, the speaker in this poem comes to the realization that he must continue living his life. The speaker is spellbound by the beauty of the place. He forgets his purpose and dwells deep into nature's beauty. Completely mesmerized, the speaker who stops for a while, fails to return to his duties. On the other hand, the horse seems to be responsible and more duty conscious. 7. How does the poet bring out the quietude in the atmosphere in the poem? Ands. 
The poet has been successful to create the atmosphere of isolation and silence by using several expressions in the poem. The speaker. 60. Avershine has mentioned that the owner of the woods lives in the village and so you won't see him stopping there. This brings an impression that he is actually all alone there. Again, the words, the darkest evening of the year, and between the woods and frozen lake, have added to the sense of gloom, mystery and isolation. And finally the speaker mentions that there were only three sounds. The sound of the harness bells of his horse, the sounds of the easy wind and the downy flake. This confirms that silence prevailed all around. The poet has created this atmosphere of isolation and silence probably to give us an impression that we are all alone in this world. This life is a lonely journey. Sometimes we stop on the way to see and enjoy life's beauty, but in the broader range, we have to fulfill the tasks we are assigned to before we go to sleep, i.e., death. 8. Explain the lines, miles to go before I sleep, in the context of the poem. Ends. This phrase appears in the two last lines of Robert Frost's simple poem Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. The speaker in the poem repeatedly utters it in the fourth stanza of the poem, indicating that the phrase is very important. The speaker says, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. The poet intends this phrase to have literal meanings, by stating that the speaker is traveling, and needs to cover some distance before getting back home. The speaker is away from his home, where he feels that he needs to repeat this fact to himself that he has miles to reach home. However, symbolically the word, sleep, suggests death and darkness. Hence, this line refers to a long journey ahead before the speaker could go to eternal sleep of death, or it simply proposes that the speaker has many responsibilities to fulfill before sleeping or dying. This phrase is used in almost every walk of life, including literature. Business, politics, and everyday life. For instance, an old man can say this to his children to show that he has much more to do for them before he dies. A businessman can allude to his business and his workers that he has to do much to give them some bonus. A military strategist can allude this to his troops to urge them to complete the mission before they could sleep. The traveler in this poem enters into a remote area where the weather is soothing, the scenery is bewitching, making him want to stay for a while. However, the speaker needs to continue this journey to fulfill his promises. The theme of this phrase is about affirming a path of life and fulfilling promises. Some critics of Frost have suggested that this poem expresses a secret death wish, though the mentioning of dying soon does not mean that the speaker wishes to die. Mostly we all, at one time or another, or struck with a realization that we will die one day. Figuratively, Frost has not used this phrase to suggest a death wish, but quite the reverse he has assured himself, for he has more years of life to fulfill obligations. It could also suggest that the narrator is falling asleep slowly, knows his responsibilities and obligations at home, yet is unable to defy a peaceful lull in the drifting snow.